Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Dai and today I am bringing you another Yarny update. This is Yarny update number 16 for August 2020 and it has been another productive month for me. I participated in Sock Week hosted by Nitty Natty and I also finished up my Stash Dash Challenge hosted by the Knit Girls and both of those channels are linked down in the description box below in case you are interested. But because of those things, I have three finished projects and I have two works in progress to show you. Again, two that you haven't seen before. So let's get into it. My first work in progress is in my Jack Skellington towel bag that my mother made for me. This is a sweater and it is a Halloween sweater. This is the Arachne sweater by Andy Satterland. It is a spider web sweater. So I will show you where I am at with that right now. I don't have very much, but this is what I have so far. So let me move this way. So I've got about half of the yoke done. I am working this in Knit Picks Galileo yarn, which is a 50% merino, 50% bamboo yarn. I think this is coming out really dark on camo, but it is actually a navy blue and a silvery gray. And so, yeah, let me move my cast on out of the way. I really like the feel of this yarn. The reason that I am working it in this type of yarn is because where I live in October it's still way too hot to be wearing a full wool garment. So I wanted something a little lighter, a little bit more breathable. And this sweater is actually a full um, long sleeve sweater and because of the temperature I am not only changing the type of fabric but I am also going to make the sleeves a little shorter. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to go for a short sleeve or if I'm going to go for a mid sleeve or three quarter sleeve. I'm thinking probably above the elbow though because that will make it a lot more wearable for me and yeah so I did this one in navy and gray because I thought again it would make it a lot more wearable for me um, orange I don't wear a lot of orange and it doesn't really go well with my skin tone and I thought that since this is a blue and gray color, I could also um, wear it at other times of year, especially going into Christmas because it's kind of a wintry web. It's going to look like a wintry web. And I may actually uh, call this winter web just because of the colors I use. But I'm really enjoying this so far. I'm using a ladder back jacquard as um, the color work technique. I did start off with stranded um, knitting, which you can see up here. And I just really wanted to work the ladder back jacquard technique because it was new to me. So far, so good. Um, it's hard to tell how flat this is going to be because it's all scrunched up on a shorter cable but I think it's going to be okay. Now <laughs> Galileo is a sport weight yarn which is what is being called for in the pattern. The suggested needle size on this was a size 5 and I ended up doing my swatch and I didn't like the fabric I was getting. Plus I was only getting about 18 stitches per 4 inches and the gauge that is asked for is 24 stitches per 4 inches so I was way off. 
So I ended up going down to a size four and the fabric was a lot better, but I was still only getting about 18 inches per four inches, 18 stitches per four inches. So I went down to a size three, same thing, down to a size two and I was only getting 19 stitches per inch. So I really wanted to use this yarn for the project. I did end up buying this yarn for this project. And so I decided to do a little bit of math and at the gauge that I was getting, I decided to go ahead and go with a size four needle and do a size medium. That should give me at my gauge a 54 inch bust, which gives me the, the amount of ease that is asked for. It actually gives me about an inch more ease, but that's okay. I'm okay with having a little bit of a bigger garment. Um, and so far it's looking like it, that's like right. It looks right. Like I said, I'm about halfway down the yoke. So, so far so good. I am liking uh, the fabric that I'm getting. The only thing is that I had watched a video by Suzanne Bryan on Gladderback Jacquard. And the way she started it was to do a right lifted increase and I had noticed that when I did that, it left me with like a hole. So let me see if I can show you here, yeah, right here. Do you see this hole right here? I, that happened because of the lifted increase and I didn't really see it until <laughs> I was like two repeats into the pattern so I mean it's not a big deal I could probably fiddle with the stitches in order to close that up but because of that I decided that whenever I needed to add in more ladders that I just did a backwards loop increase and so that seems to be working well. I am not getting any more of those holes. And yeah, so far so good. I am a little bit concerned that my back fabric, the fabric that the ladder back jacquard is creating is maybe a little tighter than the front, which could cause some puckering, but it's still, it's stretchy. I'm not I'm pretty happy with this so far, so yeah. Looking forward to working more on this one and having a nice Halloweeny garment off the needles um, so that I can wear it in October. And so yeah, that's my first work in progress, the Arachne sweater by Andy Satterland. So my next work in progress is in the I Smell Children bag from Utterly Adorable Knits. I also got a new pin, which I don't think you can see very well, but that says Honorary Sanderson Sister. So let me see if I can, there we go. Honorary Sanderson Sister. So like I said, this is my bag from Otterly Adorable Knits, who I really enjoy. And in this bag, it houses my daughter's new socks they're halloween socks of course so i am working these socks in uh, a yarn from ms monster creations and it's called witchcraft so it looks like this it's a lot of blacks and orchid and pink and green it's really really pretty i gotten this a couple years ago and i'm just busting it out to use it right now I am improvising a pattern for my daughter and so what I am doing is a three by one broken rib with a garter 
heel flap and a French French heel turn. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the toe yet, but let me put what I have on a blocker for you right now. I do have all of the details on um, my Ravelry page and my blog post as far as what I am doing. I am working these on my Haya Haya flyers, 2.75 millimeter, and this is what I have so far. So I think it's looking really great. This is the first time I'm doing a garter heel flap and oh let me get that yarn out of the way there we go it looks like that so yeah this is a cascade heritage solid in a plum color and I thought it just went really really well I did a one by one rib to kind of match up with the three by one broken rib and yeah, so far so good. I, if you remember a couple episodes ago, I was working the higher higher flyers on my daughter's Neville's Joy socks. And I didn't really like it for that because the Neville's Joy sock was heavily patterned. There was a lot of purling. And I find that this type of, of needle doesn't really work that well for heavily textured designs um, so I decided since I was going to be doing a pretty plain type of sock that I would try the higher higher flyer again and I actually really enjoy it for this type of sock it's working really well I'm not having as much trouble as I was with how I'm holding the needles and it's just really flying off the needle. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm enjoying using them. And I'm really happy with how the sock is turning out. So this is all I've got uh, so far. So I will have this done um, probably in the next couple weeks. So far, so good. So these are my daughter's witchcraft socks. So let's get into finished objects. The first finished object I have for you are my Yuletide socks. You might remember these from back in January, I think, is when I showed these last. I had finished this first one, which um, I believe is this one in the front. I had finished this one back in January. This was the Advent sock for Bakery Bears patrons. So every other day we got a new part of the pattern. So you can see that there are all different um, stitch sections. And after I finished the first one, I didn't cast on the second one. So when Sock Week came out and I heard about it, I thought, oh, that's going to be a great challenge to try to get one sock done during the week I knew it was something that I could accomplish and if you watched my last yarny update you know that I was thinking that I would do something a little bit more simple something more mindless but then I remembered that I had these socks languishing in a bag and I thought you know what I better get that done so I decided to go ahead and work the second sock for my sock week challenge so I do have two completed socks here I'm very very happy with them um, and I finished on Friday which was six days as opposed to taking the full eight days to do it so I think I did a pretty good job you can see that these are super super long um, these are probably the longest socks that I have done. I, yes, they are the longest socks that I have done. I don't normally wear my socks these tall, um, but I did try them on because I was concerned that they wouldn't fit my calf. 
but they do. I did a nice stretchy cast on and yeah, I'm very happy with these. I have not blocked them yet. I don't usually block my socks uh, before I wear them for the first time. It's just because I don't really find that it matters because I do have a bit of negative ease when I'm doing my socks. So everything stretches out nice when it's on the leg. And yeah, very, very happy with these. This dark teal color is Ice Yarns Solid Sock in Teal. And for the heels and toes, I did pick Stroll Fingering in Wonderland Heather. And I just am very, very happy with these. I'm going to have another pair of socks to wear during the winter time. And yeah, so these were for Sock Week 2020. Again, I'll link Nitty Natty's channel down in the description box below so you can check her out. She's doing a fall garment cowl right now, um, which... I should have mentioned when I was talking about my arachne sweater is what I am um, entering that sweater for and yeah definitely check her out I've been really enjoying her channel and I'm really happy that I was able to complete another languishing whip using the sock week challenge. So on the Christmas socks theme, I finished my Christmas in July short and sweet socks. These are done in my leftover yarn from Lolo Did It, um, the Joy yarn that I used for my daughter's Neville's Joy sock. So I ended up using some contrasting heel and toe yarn just because I had mentioned before that her Neville's Joy sock was completely in the one yarn and normally when we share we use contrasting heels and toes so that there's enough for both of us. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I had enough yarn for me and because this was a shorty pair of socks as well that really helped. This is the Short and Sweet Pattern by Kay Jones from the Bakery Bears. Again, another patron-only um, pattern. This is part of their Knitting University set of patterns, which is a collection of video tutorials showing you how to do each section of um, certain things. So this was the Magic Loop Sock Pattern. I do most of my socks on Magic Loop, um, but you can see that there is a 2x2 two two rib and a simple eyelet design, slip stitch, heel, and her umbrella toe. So another pair of Christmas socks for me to wear during the holidays. I really, really like um, these socks it, it does look a little bit uh strawberry-ish <laughs> but whenever i see red and green together i think of christmas and i don't know if you can see but there is a little bit of sparkle in there this is lolo did it sparkle sock yarn i really really love this colorway and i am glad to have another pair of christmas socks to wear so my last finished object is a shawl. It is a Christmas present that I have made for my dad's wife. And yes, I call her my dad's wife because they got married when I was already an adult. So I just call her by her name. But this is the Duchess of Devonshire shawl. So you can see that is quite big. And for this shawl, I used Sweet Nothings by Lisa from Yarn Lady, Yarn Loving Lady by Lisa, which is this pink um, variegated yarn. And then the gray is Filcolana Arweta in just a dark gray color. It is the first time I am using um, yarn by both of these companies and I really enjoyed it. It's a very simple, again, eyelet design with a garter stitch section. 
And then this was my first time working an applied um, edging. You can't really see that. So it's my first time working this applied edging. That is a little better. Of course, because I knew that I was going to be doing the applied edging, I would have to make sure that all of my stitch counts were correct. And they were. However, when I got closer to the end of the applied edging, I realized that my count was off and I don't know why. Um, but I was able to fix it um, without having to rip back, thankfully. Um, you can't really tell, but I did have to double up on um, some of the pickups over here on the end. Still looks fine. Still, I think it's fine. Um, like I had said, this is for my dad's wife. She lives in Hawaii, so I didn't want something that was too heavy, but I wanted something that she'd be able to just like throw on over a cute dress or just, you know, a plain dress and just have something to wrap around in case there is a nice breeze and yeah. So I've got one Christmas present down, which is great. I am planning on making my father a pair of socks for Christmas. Um, I've not made him a pair of socks before. I have made him a sweater though. And he actually sent me a picture of him wearing it um, the year that I had sent it to him. So that was nice. And so yeah, one Christmas present down. And I am very happy with this as well. So it is very lightweight. I was actually supposed to go home to Hawaii for a visit, but that has since been canceled. Um, I was supposed to go a couple weeks from now. And yeah, it's been canceled. So I will not be able to see them. But this will go in the mail in a couple of months. And I hope she enjoys it. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got to share with you as far as what I've knit in August. And I do want to do at least one more Halloween type garment for myself. I am pondering about what yarns to use um, and what I would like. Like I said, because it is rather hot here still um, during Halloween and in October. I am looking at shirt designs, so like a nice blouse or something that I could still wear to the office, um, but still be in the spirit. So I do have a couple yarns I'm looking at, but I haven't yet decided what I'm going to do. But that's something that I've been thinking about. I also really need to start working on my cousin's baby's sweater set. I think I've decided to do a sweater set, a pair of mittens, and a pair of booties for my new cousin. So yeah, that's pretty much all I am thinking about for future knitting plans. I... I'm participating in the Fall Garment Cow hosted by Nitty Natty, like I said. I will link um, her kind of announcement type video down in the description box below so that you can check that out and see if it's something that you'd want to get in on. Night Owl Fibers is also hosting a spooky kind of make along um, until October. So I will link her down in the description box below as well. She is where I got that Sanderson sister pin that's on my Otterly Adorable Knits bag. It had come as part of a three skein spooky fun 
um, mini type, not mini, they were full skeins. I got these full skeins. Um, so it was three full skeins, kind of uh, mystery yarn box, <laughs> I guess. Um, so there were three skeins. I did open up one. I'm not going to share it though because I haven't seen anybody else share their skeins yet. So I don't know if everybody's waiting until October, but I've decided that I'm going to open up one skein a month. Um, and I'm hopefully going to get those knit. Maybe not. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I'll link her knit along down in the description box below as well. The last thing that I want to talk about is how I did for Stash Dash. So I haven't really talked about this much on my channel, but I did participate in Stash Dash hosted by the Knit Girls. And my goal was 5,000 meters at the end of Stash Dash, which ended in the middle of August. I ended up with a total of 5,474 meters. So I did meet my goal. Unfortunately, I didn't load all of my completed projects to the finish line thread uh, before it got closed. I didn't realize it was going to close so early, um, but I did stitch up until the very last day and was able to finish um, the Duchess of Devonshire shawl as part of my last um, finishing item. So the Duchess of Devonshire shawl and the short and sweet socks were my last two items for that. I also completed the All Is Calm socks for my mom, the Clip Crows Fly Again socks for my daughter, the Campside Cardi, the uh, City Limit sweater, and a Flax sweater for my daughter. I believe those were all of the projects that I had finished for Stash Dash. And so, yeah, I'm definitely going to be participating in that next year. It was really, really inspiring. And I was able to finish not only one work in progress, which was the flax sweater um, for my daughter, but I was able to complete a bunch of new projects as well. So, yeah. Let me know if you're going to be participating in any of these make-alongs. I'd love to know. Let me know if you've worked on any of these projects or if you plan on working on any of them and what your favorite item that you stitched in the month of August was. I'd love to see what you were working on. And yeah, so that's about all I've got to share with you today. I hope you're all doing great. I hope you are all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye.